So we have a question from a viewer in Northfield. Um, it's it's going to lead into sort of a bigger question, so I'm going to link it to the bigger question and we'll talk about uh, both here. This viewer is concerned about why isn't health premium relief being proposed to everyone? He has a, a health insurance premium through his employer, which uh, goes up every year as well. Um, concerned about that issue, but of course there's this larger concern about um, sort of the health insurance premium issues, the fallout from Obamacare and the big discussion, argument, whatever you may want to say that we've had over the last several months. I'm going to start with you, Senator Benson, and maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about where this issue is at and maybe help our viewers understand from your perspective um, where we're going with this. And I understand there are some differences and there's some differences between the caucuses and, and with the governor as well. So the floor is yours to talk about this for a moment, but also perhaps respond to uh, our Northfield viewer as well. And I understand uh, the viewer's concern. Um, we're, there are people who do not have employers support for their insurance. There are people who cannot access public programs, who cannot access advanced premium tax credits. Their insurance went up no less than 50 percent and up to 67 percent. I met a man today who for his family pays forty thousand dollars a year for insurance. And so today we moved um, with help of colleagues from the other side, we moved uh, Senate File 1, which provides premium relief, some continuity of care support, reinsurance, and some reforms to help small businesses help their employees even more. And so we hope that that relief continues to move through. <coughs> um, I did receive a copy of a letter that the governor sent today saying he agrees, th agrees there needs to be some form of reinsurance, and so I think while we're moving very quickly through the process, we're also making significant progress. Um, there's agreement on continuity of care, and that was that was a big step. So we can focus on where we agree. Um, we can make changes to how the premium relief is sent out to Minnesotans, get that done as quickly as possible. And I'm really glad that the governor has engaged in the reinsurance conversation that proves that even the next few days might be very fruitful as I as I talk with other legislators and try to get this going. Representative Hartman, let's go to you. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's important that we separate two issues. Really, we need to do two things. We need to provide immediate relief to people who are hurting, and we need to work on restructuring the individual insurance market in Minnesota so that it works in the future. And I think that we're approaching a point where we can find common ground, where we separate those two issues and we deal with relief, getting relief to families right away, and then we spend the thoughtful time that we need to reform the system so we don't have a repeat of this problem in the future. The difficulty is in the month of January doing something as complicated as a 500 million or 1.3 um, billion kind of f dollar fix to a system um, that, that's really not something you can responsibly accomplish in 30 days, and we don't need to. What we need to do is we need to get relief out to families, and then I, I actually think there's quite a bit of common ground. We had a first-class system in Minnesota um, before the Affordable Care Act. We were a top-tier state in terms of providing health care insurance to people in our state, and I think we're going to probably return to some of the things that were working well before the Affordable Care Act uh, once we get some relief out the door to these families. Senator Kim, your thoughts? So with background in uh, the private sector and in small business, I think it's important to think back a little bit and, and think about what had happened if we'd not passed the Affordable Care Act and how costs were increasing across the board. Cost sharing was going up um, at an unsustainable basis, and we were losing people who had access to insurance. And, you know, the good news is 96 percent of Minnesotans have access to insurance now. They have insurance. We have made some important gains, and it's important that as we have these conversations, we not lose sight of that and we not lose sight of taking care of people with pre-existing conditions, for example, or making sure that our young adult children can stay on our policies, those sorts of things that really everybody agrees are positive. But as we do it, um, you know, I've heard from constituents over and over again that they are really struggling with these increases and we need to give them immediate relief. And the concern with what we passed today in the Senate is that it um, uh, really will not get relief to people until 2018 when they need it now. Uh, they've got to make decisions by January 31st. And so uh, we do have a little time that we can seriously and soberly and gather the information. You know, we've looked at things that we don't have fiscal notes. That's legislator 
inside baseball, but um, basketball, baseball, sorry. Um, but uh, we just don't have all the details yet that we need to really um, make good informed decisions. But there's so much bipartisan support for uh, attacking these issues and doing them carefully. So let's get the immediate relief that's needed to people who need it, and then let's seriously and urgently take on the issue of, of making the fixes. And just a reminder, prior to the Affordable Care Act, Minnesota allowed um, adult children to stay in their parents' plans until they were 25 years old. And if you had a pre-existing condition, we had the Minnesota Comprehensive Health Assessment where you could access insurance for just a little more than you would have paid in the private market. So if you had a pre-existing condition, you couldn't be turned down for insurance in Minnesota. And so that really made us nation leading. And so it's not that we wanna go back to those things, but we wanna remember and learn from the things that we had in place and move forward to what works in a new federal mm -hmm. model. President Walbert? I think, you know, you, you first have to understand that the, the patient has arrived in the emergency room on, on life support. Uh, and first, you know, a, a house file number one or a Senate file number one is really the triage to stabilize the patient. And as we work that through and stabilize the patient, at, at least we're, we're not going to lose the patient. And then as we move into uh, other legislation where we can remedy and, and, and in a sense diagnose in a more uh, cogent as well as thoughtful uh, progression in terms of what does the patient need. And whether that's IMCHA 2.0, or some other uh, fashion, I think that's where uh, the rubber meets the road in terms of identifying what, what we need, because Minnesota has always been a leader, an innovator in terms of health care, bar none. And so what we need to do is go back to our roots in terms of understanding what put us in that position and remind ourselves of that it is a bipartisan issue that, that brings everyone to the table in terms of, uh, of an effort that provides for best in, in class, best in nation uh, healthcare innovation. And I think we've got the caliber talent uh, already on board to, to bring to bear uh, the answers that, that we're all looking for. I think it's reasonable to suggest that we're probably not going to solve all the healthcare uh, questions in uh, the hour that we have available to us. And I'm sure we're going to get more questions from viewers as we go forward. And of course, all of this is going to be affected by decisions that yeah. are made in Washington and Again, they're not calling us and asking us for advice. So we'll move on from that question.